kama la mingi mi Fernando Armando Mabunda sibendo amela plazini sibende pana swim zambiki to bando to fundi msebeni ngalini sita freak The health sector in South Africa, we have very good policies. Uh, I mean, generally, our policies are very progressive. However, the main challenge has been really putting what is in the constitution, what is in the health policy into practice. South Africa is one of the countries that uh, they are developing compared to the, our neighboring countries. So it also attracts a lot of migrants from our neighboring communities. When it comes to budgeting for Department of Health, it becomes also a problem because they budget according to the population they have. So if you are in a micro immigration corridor, you cannot do your budget. At local level, they will tell you that they are not sure whether they are supposed to be giving migrant uh, services. If someone presents with TB and you treat them as whether they are migrant or non-migrant, that, you know, in terms of health, that has no bearing because at the end of the day, TB is communicable. So if you do not treat them, then the person is going to go back into the community and continue to spread the TB amongst the people that they live with. Sing <laughs> We work in the farms where you have both um, locals and migrants. So that part of our interventions was focusing on making sure that they have access to services. And we would work with um, the primary health care clinics, taking them to the farms. We had uh, within the farms um, a cater of change agents who were sort of the mobilizers. So they will mobilize their peers so that they, you know, the people feel safe. So the clinics will provide a mobile unit on a regular basis and the change agents on that day of the mobile clinic visit, they will then mobilize uh, the farm workers. At the clinic, uh, services they're getting, it's primary health care. The normal one, like if you got headache, or maybe suffering from stomach ache, hypertension, or to get ARVs or TB treatment. Uh, for those who are on chronics and uh, also to check uh, their status for like uh, testing for HIV. Uh, also checking for malaria as we are in a malaria area. We realized if they just come to the work and work for three, four hours, go off to the clinic, get the, uh, the, the medicines, come back with the paper. So if they're back in time, they can just fall in again. For us, it's much better because you know, if they're ill and they don't have the medicine, they're not getting better. And if we can make plan that they can get the medicine, they, they become a much better worker for us on the farm. I'm sitting at the clinic, 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 I'm sitting at the clinic. Now I can see a lot of migrants going to the clinics and even the mobile clinics when coming to the farms. Now they even are like rushing to be the first one to go to the mobile because now they know that they, they are able to access services even if they are migrants. By the time they arrive in a particular settlement, they've been through a journey which most of the time will include a whole lot of violations. So I think it's very important that there's intentional effort to reach migrant communities without necessarily exceptionalizing them, but simply because they will have, um, you know, 
additional vulnerabilities. And I think also within that, you know, once you address migrants within that context, automatically everybody benefits because it means you are improving your services to be more responsive. So if not to migrants, it will also be to other groups that may not necessarily have had access. So I think it, it becomes an advantage, but I think also is the right thing to do. I think there's a whole lot of socio-economic benefits that as a country we are getting from the migrants. So while we're benefiting from them, they should also benefit in terms of, you know, having their right to access health services. It's the right of everyone to have access to basic health services. <laughs>